10 React tips and tricks. Some of these you might not know, some of these you probably do know, but might just not be using as much as you should, so I'm gonna tell you anyways. Tip number one, portals. Let's say you've got this deeply nested component here. You're instantiating this component deep down the component tree, but you'd rather it actually be rendered elsewhere in the tree. For example, maybe you've got a modal component where you want its parent to be the body tag so that you can have it fill the entire viewport. Well, you can do this pretty easily with a React portal. It's relatively simple. So instead of returning your JSX as usual, you're just gonna return a call to React DOM.createPortal. This function takes two arguments. The first is some JSX that you actually wanna render, and the second is the element in the DOM that you wanna render it inside of. If you're using a server-side rendering framework like Next.js, which is what I'm using right here, you'll wanna make sure that you aren't actually making this call until the component is mounted. Now, if we take a look at this in the inspector, we can see that we're actually rendering this component under the body tag, as opposed to inside of the div where it looks like it should be being rendered. A word of caution is to use this in cases only really where you have to, like modals and toast components and stuff like that. Using it all over the place will result in some janky, difficult to debug code. Tip number two. Use state callbacks. Here's a pretty common example of how someone might use a use state hook. We've got this simple counter here where when a button is clicked, we call set value, value plus one, and this is fine. But one cool trick to know is that you can instead pass a callback to the setter function. This callback will pass you the previous value as an argument and whatever you return from it is what the state will be set to. This both ensures that the value you're acting on is always the most current as well as can save you from having to pass around an extra prop in some cases where you might not need to. Tip number three, the React DevTools profiler. A great way to find performance performance bottlenecks in your app is using the React DevTools profiler. I've got this little app here with a couple of random elements in the corners of the screen, then a button in the middle, which when pressed renders a bunch of little circles randomly around the viewport. As you probably noticed, clicking this button causes some lag in the app. If we want to debug exactly what's going on, we can simply pop open the DevTools and head over to the Profiler tab. Note that you'll need to have installed the React DevTools to do this. Click this little Start Recording button and then just start performing some actions. Once you're done recording, you can click Stop and you'll have some tabs here which show you insights into how long rendering different components took. As we can see here, the Should Take Forever component is indeed taking forever, while everything else is rendering in under a millisecond. So we can probably go ahead and take a look at the Should Take Forever component to figure out why that's taking so long. Tip number four, absolute imports. If you find yourself writing imports that look like this, you should stop. All you have to do is add a jsconfig.json file to the root of your project, or a tsconfig.json file if you're using TypeScript, then add in a compiler options key with a base URL of period, period meaning current directory. You could also specify a directory if you wanted to. Now that we've done this, we can write imports from the root of a directory as opposed to having to write all of those dot dot slashes all over the place. Tip number five, declare functions outside of your components. This one's a pretty simple little performance improvement that I notice a lot of people don't do. If you you've got functions in your components which don't really rely on directly accessing any state or set state calls or anything like that, declare them outside of your components. This keeps a component from having to redefine the function on every single render. Tip number six, react.memo. Sometimes we want a bit more control over when we do or don't want a component to be re-rendered. For this, we can wrap our component in a higher order component called react.memo. React.memo takes two arguments, the first being the component itself and the second being a function for comparing the last render's props with the next render's props. If if we simply return true from this function, then this component will never be re-rendered due to props changing, though it is helpful to note that re-renders will happen if its own state changes. In this case, I've got these three props here, and I only care to re-render this component if this one changes. I can add a simple check like this, and now this component will only re-render if this specific prop changes. Tip number seven, the use memo hook. Sometimes you may want to calculate a value based on some pieces of state. In this case, I've got an array called values, and I'm showing a sum of all of those values in the UI using this calculate value function. One way we could show the result is by simply calling this function inside a set of curly braces in our JSX. The problem with this is that the value will now be recalculated every time that this component renders. To demonstrate this, I'm gonna pass in an argument to my function that will log out where the call was made. I'll also add another piece of state as well as a button which changes it to cause a re-render of the component. If I look at my logs, you'll see that calculate value is being called on every render even though the values array hasn't changed. In order to fix this, we can use the use memo hook. This hook takes in a function for calculating the value as well as an array containing all of the state it depends on. In this case, sum will now only be recalculated if the values array changes. I'll add in a button for adding new values to the values array, then jump back over to our app. If we look in the console, sum is not recalculated when values of other state changes, but it is recalculated whenever the values array changes. Tip number eight, the use callback hook. As mentioned earlier, functions defined in components will by default be reinitialized anytime that the component re-renders. In many cases, those functions may rely on some state which cannot be pulled out of the component like in our earlier example. 
For those cases, it may make sense to use the use callback hook. In this example, I've got a button which toggles a piece of state called value, as well as a function called non-memoized function. I'm passing this function down to a child component, then logging it out anytime the value of the function changes inside of a use effect hook. If we look in our console, we can see that anytime state changes, this function is reinstantiated. We can fix this by creating another function, I'll call it memoized function. We set this equal to a use callback hook. The use callback hook takes in a function, in this case, I'll pass it non-memoized function, as well as a dependency array. I can keep the dependency array empty for this example. I'll pass this function down the same way that I did with the other, then log it out anytime that it changes. If we check out our console, its value never changes after it's first instantiated. Tip number nine, the use ID hook. Let's take this example where we've got an email capture form component, which we render at both the top and the bottom of our page. Inside of this form, we've got a label and an input with an ID set for the input and an HTML4 attribute on the label, which points to that input. This is a problem because now we're rendering two separate inputs with the same ID. An easy remedy for this is using the use ID hook. This hook can be used in place of setting your own ID and provides a unique value every time that it's called. Now, if we inspect our page, we'll see that both forms have their own unique ID values. Tip number 10, writing custom hooks. In this example, I've got a simple counter app with a value as well as an increment and decrement functions. This is fine, but if we wanna reuse this logic, we can do that by creating a custom React hook. Custom React hooks are actually super simple. All you have to do is create a functional component like you normally would, but instead of returning JSX, you just return some values. I'll create a function called a use counter, then grab the state and functions from our component and paste them into this hook. After that, I'll return an object containing all of those values, then replace the logic in my component with my new hook. Now I can take the same hook and reuse it as many times as I want. That's it for this one, guys. I hope you picked up a thing or two. Let me know your tips and tricks down in the comments. Like and subscribe if you got something out of this. And yeah, see you next time. Peace.